Hi, I'm here today with Lewis. Um, this is a dog that I just finished in a poodle demonstration. Unfortunately, I didn't get him done. We only had an hour. So I'm just gonna work on him a little bit, um, maybe describe some of the techniques that I'm using. He's such a beautiful dog. You know, he walked in, he kind of looked like a buffalo. He had about this much hair on his front end and about this much hair on his back end. Uh, so I'm just gonna do some finishing touches. Uh, one of the things that um, helps us with our time in our salon is sculpting, which means using a, a blade on a clipper, whether it be a seven all the way to a long snap on, and not going all the way to the dog's skin. So I'm gonna pull his legs out a little bit. This is such a time saver with doodles, poodles, bouviers, old English sheepdogs, you know, all those legs that take you hours to do. I'm just gonna take my snap-on. I'm using a number one wall snap-on on my uh, cordless clipper. And these are the same stainless steel ones that uh, we have, that we clip on to our big clippers, but these were made specifically for the five-in-one blades, and they're just an incredible time saver. So I'm just skimming it down, just taking off the ends, saving myself some scissor time. And these are so interchangeable and taking them out. For example, I used a brown one on his belly. I used a uh, baby blue one, which is the longest one. As you can see, he still has quite a bit of hair on his body. I used a very short blade back here. I used uh, the brown one all the way to his skin. And now, just because I'm using the brown one doesn't mean I'm going as short. Just skimming it right down. And as you can see, that leg won't need very much scissoring to tidy that up now. And that only took about 35 seconds to do. I'm just gonna pull some of his leg hair ahead here. He didn't have too much back leg hair to start with. So we're just gonna improvise. Just gonna take my snap-on blade around his flank here and take this down. Just sculpt it. Like I said, I'm still leaving this coat probably two or three inches long. I'm just taking off the ends to save myself some time. Go right on the inside here. As you can see, he's got a beautiful shape about him now. Um, so now I'm gonna turn him around and show you what I started with and uh, take that side down as well. Hey buddy, how does that sound? Come on, come around this way. All right, so here we have a whole different brown poodle. So there was his before. So what we're gonna do is use the same snap-on combs we were using on the other side and even this dog up, because I'd hate to send him home half grooms. Like I said, I used the longest blue one, and these aren't snap-ons, these are slide-ons. So you just slide it right onto your five-in-one clipper like that. Make sure there's no mats. If you're using a snap-on comb, prep is key because if you hit a mat, you're gonna make a hole. Just gonna take some of this coat down. It's got a little bit of matting in here and there's no point in pulling on this dog and making it more uncomfortable if I'm gonna cut it off anyway. So I'm scissoring it off because that snap-on comb would absolutely catch those mats. It's a good boy. I slide right out. Uh, spray. Always use an anti-stat spray. It's gonna help not only get your comb through the dog, but it's gonna help hold that coat up so you could get a nice finished scissor on it. I'm using a matte magic. Doesn't necessarily mean your dog is matted. It just is a nice, clean, non-sticky spray to help get through with the coat better. Okay, so what I did on the other side is I used this baby blue around his rib cage on, on his top line because he is quite a thinner dog and I didn't want to make him look slab-sided. So we're just gonna take this right in. His withers are all the way up here, so I'm starting quite a bit back. And you can see this dog's coat is extremely thick and 
This blade just goes through it like butter. We are ridiculously lucky as groomers nowadays to have stuff like this. And for puppies and cats, you know, you could hardly hear this blade. My microphone's right here and you could hardly hear it running at all. So since this is the longest snap-on uh, comb in the set, and he does have ribs that you can feel, I'm gonna have to take my scissors and go over it again, just quickly, just in between, because it's, there's no way even pulling all the skin up, the ribs are gonna make my job any easier. Okay, so that's about the only spot that I wanted to do with the longest snap-on blade. So now I'm just gonna slide it off slide it off my blade, slide on the next one. I'm going to go to the front of him. As you can see, he's got a lot of heavy, heavy, heavy coat here. I'm just going to take this away. And I'm moving away from the dog the further down I go. Do a lot of uh, dogs, poodles, all of them seem to be a little shouldery and you want that line to be nice and parallel going right into the rib cage. So I'm going to take this shorter as I do on most dogs. And just blending it right down into the leg. Certainly not going right into the leg. I'm going to turn my clippers off and show you if I went right into the leg, that's how much more hair I'd be taking off. going to sculpt it down. I'm going to be very careful not to cut into my neckline here. I'm going to hold his ear forward, being careful not to pull. I'm just going to hold it forward while I'm holding his muzzle. Take this line down a little bit here. And I'll blend the rest of that neck in with my, with my scissors. Again, I'm not going right down to the skin here because the, it's quite deep in here and all I want to do is blend it together with the line that I did here with the longer length of snap on, slip on, slide on, whatever you want to call these glorious blades. Okay. As you can see already, just taking this off and taking this a bit shorter, he's already got a lot more elegance going on, you know, it, it, um, and poodles need to be elegant. It brings them up on neck quite a bit. Come here, sweetheart. Jesse, do you want to come hold his head for me? All right, so now what I'm going to do is stay with the brown blade, which is the number one. And what I like to do with the underlines is take them a whole lot shorter. So I'm going to go backwards, straight from the flank. Be careful not to get the flank in between your blade. You're going to go real short in there. What I'm doing is pulling that back with my other hand right here, just to make sure I don't cut it. And I'm just going to go backwards. And it's gonna, you'll see magic straight away because the other side's already done, so you'll be able to see that. So once you go backwards with a blade on a dog, uh, usually if you need to clean it up going forwards, it's no big deal. It's certainly not gonna take it any shorter than the backwards already did. Okay, so now I'm just gonna give him a quick spritz. Home. He's such a handsome guy. So now I take a look back and like what's wrong with this picture to me. Like I said, I'm going to have to go over this with my scissors a little bit. Can you pass me my black long curves? All right. So I'm just going to go over this rib cage a little. If you could just put his head up a little, Jesse. Good boy. He's been very patient with me for the last couple hours. He's a goofball outside. He runs around like, <laughs> life is great. But he's so well behaved on the table. All right, so just a quick little clean up with my scissors. And there's a little bit of a tumor look going on here. I'm just gonna clean right up with my straights. Can you pass me the uh, 
Paws Brothers Comfort Shears, the extra long ones. When you have a dog this big, it's really nice to have that extra inch of blade for sure. So these are Comfort, um, comfort Sharp Shears made by Paws Brothers. Um, they decided to come up with an affordable, really good, versatile scissor that can cut through anything. As you can see how thick this dog's hair is, and all the way down to the end of, th they say they're nine and a half inches, but I think they're lying. I think they must be a little bit longer. So you can cover a whole lot more area. These scissors cut like butter, and they're all under 100 bucks each, which makes it okay to throw them across the room sometimes. Okay, so now I'm quite happy with how this part is looking on him for sure. I'm gonna go back to sculpting because this, if I was to hand scissor this leg, it would probably be about 20 minutes. I'm gonna probably do it in about five. Need a little anti-static relief here. Coloring is magnificent, his whites and his browns. And he's a young dog yet, so they probably really don't even know what kind of color he's gonna end up to be completely. Okay, again, I'm gonna take these uh, handy dandy snap-on on my uh, cordless clipper. I'm gonna give him a little bit of angulation in his back. You know, the best way to make a dog look shorter is take hair off back here and hair off their chest. Be very careful around his testicular area. <laughs> so again, I'm not going right to skin. I'm just doing some sculpting. I'm starting right at the, the butt bone right here and coming down from there. The, the reason being I want to leave a little bit of this hair here so I could build a little bit of a shelf and give him some angulation in the back. Okay. And then I've already done this side, so I'm gonna judge how far I'm gonna go down. So I'm just gonna give it a nice clean line. I can't see what I'm doing from that side, but I know that I'm not taking too much off because I'm now ma ma um, matching this side. And you wanna know your dog before you start sculpting for sure. You know, you certainly don't wanna do it with a dog that's doing this all over the place because you will end up making holes. Um, I've been working on him, you know, for most of the afternoon, so I do trust him. We have a relationship now but you know if I didn't have Jesse my assistant here holding on to him you know he may be ducking forward as well so if you're gonna sculpt or you're just gonna start sculpting and you, ne you need practice definitely have someone help you by holding the dog okay so I'm just gonna come in here as you can see I'm just slicing through this hair I'm not close to the skin it's doing all that work that you don't have to do with your scissors just gonna come to the front. And right from his flank, just gonna carry that line down. Just taking off these ends. When I fluff up his coat, I do it like this. If you do it like this, that coat is now pointing upwards. So when you go to sculpt it, you might take a little bit too much off once the coat settles and sits the way it does when he's walking down the street. Just go over it again. As you can't see what my hand's doing under here, but I'm pushing this flag hair out because getting in here is quite difficult. So I'm pushing it out and taking the edges off. And then when I put it back, it goes right back in. Okay, so now that I've gotten the bulk of the hair off of this leg, which was quite substantial, before I scissor it in, I like to do the bevel. That being because when you start something and go down and you don't have the bottom finished, it may end up a little bit uneven. So I'm gonna show you the easiest way to do a bevel on a poodle and it's not with a pair of scissors, believe it or not. And more spray. Look how handsome you are. Like I know, but I'm tired, lady. Okay, comb all this hair down. I've already shaved his feet. 
Our wonderful Jesse has shaved his feet. I'm gonna pop this blade off. I'm gonna have it on a 40 blade setting, which is the shortest on this particular dog. So I'm gonna hold all this hair down. And the most important tip for this is never go in straight down. What I'm doing, his foot's facing downwards. I'm going in at a 45 degree angle and I'm going to about the spot where I shaved it up to and I'm scooping that hair out. Scooping that hair out. Scoop, 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 scoop. Okay, so now that I've done that, always on that 45 degree angle, I'm gonna put this foot down. I'm gonna comb it all down again. Give it a shake so it's a little more natural. And I'm just gonna take the edges off. I'm gonna get down here so I could see. I'm just gonna take the very edges off. And what used to take me about 15 minutes going around and around and around, we just did in about three or four minutes for a bevel. You know, it's nice and tidy looking. Um, it's just so much easier because the clipper does all the work for you. You don't have to scissor and scissor and scissor. That clipper just takes that hair out, scoops it out, and makes it nice and tight and pretty.